We were tracking everything from sectionals to substates to state quarterfinals. Lots of stuff. We'll start with softball tonight. Quincy Notre Dame girls in action at the Havana sectional semifinals, taking on traditional state power Stanford Olympia. Look at the defense in the first inning right here by Tori Kuhn. The Keith Hernandez like scoop at first base, but defense would betray the Lady Raiders. They were down four to nothing. Three of those runs unearned when Cassidy Gangenbacher in the top of the fifth gets two back for her team halves the lead at that point for Stanford Olympia and makes it at that point a five to or four to two game down five to three more fun from Q and D Katie Ann Obert doing work right here giving her team the lead or actually cutting the lead at that point but unfortunately Q and D could come up with no more the Lady Raiders fine season has come to an end final count this one was five to three in favor of Olympia Meanwhile, let's move on to more softball. We've got good news for Pace and Seymour. Thanks to a seventh inning Lacey Hager Bomber game winning RBI, it turned out to be a two run single. Pace and Seymour upends Orion, gets the win today, and advances on into the sectional finals on Saturday. Up next for Pace and Seymour will be a showdown with Abingdon who was a winner tonight, no score there. Let's move on to baseball. Q&D taking on Metro East Lutheran in their own sectional right here. It's Blake Lucy with the sacrifice fly. Nick Dietrich going to come home from third base to score at that point. And just like that, Q&D had a one to nothing lead. It would get uglier quickly, my friends. Bottom of the third, two out Zach Karstens with a pop up here to center. It's drop. Dominic Miles going to chase his way home, extend his team's lead on the air out to two to nothing. The Raiders just kept attacking in this one. Your next batter is Chris Dietrich. He's going to hit the base hit here to score the Courtesy runner Jordan Zanger at that point. The Raiders in full on attack mode tonight. Nine runs in this game. None of them answered as this was not what you would expect in a sectional, but QND flexing its muscles, getting the big time win over Metro East Lutheran. Nine to nothing. Up next for the Raiders coming up on Saturday at 11 a.m. A showdown with Williamsville, who won in the semifinals over Litchfield. Nine to four was your final there. How about Grigsville Perry and uh, Delavan going at it in this ball game? And some great defense right here on the hill by Dryden Craven, trying to get out of a jam, gets the lead runner on the bunt. Great play for him. Dryden was just working it in this game. Look at the pretty strikeout here from him in the second inning. He would end up giving up a couple of runs in this ball game. They came in the third inning courtesy of Dylan Hodges who actually ironically enough will be playing baseball at McMurray next year with Eason Smith and also with Brock Rumpel. Tell you what, the kid can pitch and he can hit. Gave his team a 2 to nothing lead. Strangely enough though, his defense would betray him as, you know what, Delavan surrenders a 2-1 to one lead in the seventh inning on four airs, including Brock Rumpel standing at second base, a strikeout, the throw down to first base is overthrown, Rumpel scores to tie it, Grigsville Perry pulls off yet another upset and a win. The Tornadoes are moving on to the sectional finals where their opponent will be Pawnee, an upset winner today over Nick Lonergan and Rout. Pawnee scored three runs in the third, never scored again, but Rout just playing hit him at you baseball today. Couldn't get a hit to fall in, couldn't get a break. The Rockets' fine season is done, so it will be Pawnee and Grigsville Perry playing at noon on Saturday as well. More scores for you to tell you about in Missouri. Santa Fe, the number one team in the state, ends Canton's fine run in the state baseball quarterfinals. Tyler Neiman today, three for four in a losing cause at the plate there. Also, back in Illinois, Jacksonville season comes to an end in Class 3A. The finest, most most successful season in Crimson's history in terms of wins ended today in an upset fashion in the regional semifinals by Springfield Southeast. Four to three was your final. We've got substate soccer, as I mentioned. Keokuk taking on Clear Creek Amana. Chiefs down two to nothing, 18 minutes to play. Look at Bryce Baxter feeding Zach Church for the header right there, and that halves the lead. Makes it a two to one game at that point. But Amana would add a goal just a few minutes later, and that would prove to be the insurance measure in this ball game as Keokuk, which had a wonderful regular season, beaten only once this regular season, ends up with a loss at the exact wrong time, losing in the playoff opener today to Clear Creek Amana. 3-1 to one was your final there. How about better news for Holy Trinity taking on West Burlington Notre Dame today and the Crusaders were playing with the wind in the first half but still creating plenty of chances against the wind. A few minutes in, Marcus Knight gets a chance to go in alone at the box, can't convert it. Later, it's been full in camp, trying to deliver a beautiful cross right here for Mitch Muller. Again, no luck. We can't show you any goals. We can tell you Holy Trinity scored some after we left, unfortunately, to get down to the Keokuk game. But the Holy Trinity Crusaders are moving on by virtue of a win. They win today 2 to nothing with a couple of late goals. Congratulations to the Crusaders. Up next for them, coming up on Saturday, a showdown with West Liberty, who ended Central Lee's season 3 to nothing. 3 to nothing, I should say.